I'm talking with Max McCombs, a scholar who's fascinated with broadcast journalism. Along with Donald Shaw, three decades ago, Max floated the idea of the agenda setting function of the media. What's that function? Well, a good place to begin with an explanation of the idea of agenda setting is actually to go back to Walter Lippmann's classic book on public opinion published early in the last century. He began that book with a chapter titled The World Outside and the Pictures in Our Heads. It was Lippmann's thesis that the news media, primarily newspapers in his day, were the bridge between that world outside and the pictures in our heads, that the pictures were a reflection of the media not necessarily of what was really happening in the world outside. So now the kind of a general explanation of the core of agenda setting would be elements that are emphasized in the media come to be regarded as important among members of the public. For many years, students have loved the catchphrase uh, that you've talked about in connection with the theory that the media don't tell us what to think, but they do tell us what to think about. Is that still hold? The second part holds very much, and that was the beginning point for agenda setting. The media focus our attention. They tell us what to think about. But the first part has to be considerably modified now, because we've gone beyond just the focus of attention to the second point in the communication process. How do we understand this topic? Uh, what's our apprehension uh, of the topic? And that's what brings us to what is now called the second level of agenda setting, that it's not just the picture, what the pictures in our heads are about, but at the second level, literally, what are the pictures? Then it often flows very directly that what we think, that is, our attitude or our opinion about this, comes very directly from the picture in our head. So, yes, we have to modify that expression now. The media not only can tell us what to think about, they can also influence how we think about it. And even by extension, not only what we think, our attitude and opinion, but in some cases, what we do. Most People talk about news stories, use the term story. Is a story by definition framing according to your definition? Very much so. That is, journalism above all involves selection of deciding to approach a topic from a particular direction and of constructing a coherent story where possible. Now, there are many factual reports that are simply a kind of jumble of facts but the kind of stories that you were looking at and continue to in your research, front page, lead story, or any story on network news, uh, broadcast news, these would all be framed? No, no. If you really look at them closely, many of those are also the same kind of jumbling of facts. If you were doing a study today, which you probably are, would you include CNN as one of the national news media? No. Why? Because the CNN total, average total audience is less than the circulation of the Austin American Statesman. It is a very small audience. Does the agenda setting function hold just for news stories or would it also hold with entertainment? Oh, very, very much so. I mean, the general proposition uh, for agenda setting is about the transfer of salience from one agenda to another. And if you're exposed enough to a particular agenda, whether it's a news agenda, the Jay Leno agenda, or whatever, and it can even extend far beyond media, then people, if that resonates with them, are going to respond. They're going to perceive those elements, whatever they are, uh, as important. Do you see anything sinister in the idea of agenda setting? That the 
media would intentionally uh, give a slant uh, to a news story? Not really. That is, it's important to, to remember that this, these agenda-setting effects of the media are the inadvertent byproduct of the fact that the media do have to select a few topics to pay attention to each day. Uh, they don't have the capacity to talk about dozens and dozens of different topics uh, every day, nor do audiences really want that much uh, information on that many different topics every day. How many issues can people focus on at one time? How many can they hold in their mind? A very small number. The public agenda seldom exceeds four or five issues maximum and most frequently is two or three issues. Increasingly people say they don't trust the media and there's a large group of people who are quite convinced that there's a liberal bias. Is there a liberal bias? To no, no. The, the, and in fact there's been a great deal of research on this and, and the evidence is simply not there. And indeed, one increasingly could argue for the dominant national media, if there is a bias, it's probably a conservative bias, particularly when you look at the salaries of the uh, major personalities on television. Uh, these are not poor people. These are not working class people. These are among the, the financial elite uh, of our country. And their interest in, typically do not run to the liberal side of the political spectrum. Uh, the evidence suggests that most of the news plays pretty much right down the middle. Max, if I was better at this, if, if I knew what you know and have a, a real working journalist's background, what would have I asked you about the media agenda that I haven't asked? I suppose you would have asked me, is there any hope this agenda might change, that this, these very strong norms would in fact become more sensitive to the public. Having some sensitivity to what parts of the media agenda do and do not resonate with the public. And in the case of public issues during a campaign, of in fact asking the people early on in the campaign what issues are you concerned about and of then pushing the candidates to talk about those issues. Most journalists are message producers. They are not communicators. 